Your body doesn't want it in there in the first place because it's toxic. Yeah. All right, we're back today. We're going to do another talk on one of Anthony's latest podcasts. We're, oh, yeah. We're sitting here in a riverbed right now. <laughs> this seemed to be the best spot for uh, sunlight and to escape the wind. It's a windy day today. Super windy, yeah. It's end of October. It's getting pretty cold, and the rain is coming. Mm -hmm. um, but, you guys, this one about caffeine, whoa. Yeah, this is a good one because <laughs> I know there's a lot of you out there that can't function without caffeine and can't function with your without mm -hmm. your coffee in the morning or your maca, matcha tea or you know at night when you're going to bed you need to have your piece of chocolate or your you know caffeinated teas or those of you that drink energy drinks. Um, and we've had discussions in the past about coffee and some of you are like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't, it's so hard to let go of it. Well, yeah, this, after you we'll hear this you information, <laughs> I'm hoping that you'll have a little change of heart. But it might help you to maybe let go of it a little bit. And if you're still like, no, 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 at least we are putting it out there and letting you know what uh caffeine is all about yeah well let's let's get into okay, it okay let's do it <laughs> so in like the 1920s the 1930s no one was really going to doctor's offices complaining about symptoms and conditions right yep it wasn't till like the 1940s when people started to pile in to doctor's offices and started complaining about all these symptoms and conditions. Yep. And who were like the main people piling into these offices? It was a lot of women. It was women, right? Yeah. And what we learn is that caffeine was developed to drug women. Yeah. And I mean, you heard on our the one we did about eggs and if you have listened to Anthony's podcast on eggs, he explains how pathogens were released in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And pathogens, these bugs that were created in labs, got released on us. And then on top of that, yeah. we were being filled with toxic heavy metals. And if you learned anything on the, the last podcast or our last video we talked about how the pathogens in combination with the heavy metals mm -hmm. start to cause problems right so eventually it caught up with everyone and then in the 40s is when people started getting sick sick they were coming in and they're saying i'm fatigued all the time i have brain fog you know starting to complain about symptoms yep. and the solution that was was put out there was well caffeine you're yep. just tired they, you're tired they wanted to create use this to mask the chronic illness when you know it's like a a temporary fix right it mm -hmm. helps boost you for a little bit and then you get back down um and for what you know they created this knowing that people would then get addicted to it and it was like that's less caffeine you know, caffeina takes but doesn't give anything in return. That's kind of what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say she's giving you a little boost of energy, but it's actually just kind of... Taking from you. It's taken a lot from you, giving you a quick little boost, but that little boost is nothing compared to what she's taking. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting. I don't know if you guys caught this, but in the podcast, he talked about how pathogens are released through medical treatments yeah so earlier i was just saying that the we bugs were that the bugs were that. released on us but he explained that they were released through medical treatments and he didn't say what exactly but he did say that they were released through medical treatments 
Well, I mean, you can kind of put you two and two together. That imagine what that means. So, what medical treatments are they offering to us right now? With what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be one of the reasons that. Well. They're getting bugs out there. And that's those treatments are offered during this time of year. With so, yeah, you guys put that together for yourself. <laughs> So in the 1940s, 1950s, a new industry was born. Coffee. The coffee industry. So people started drinking their, their cup of coffee. And you notice how I say cup. Right. It was, people were just drinking cups of coffee here and there. Nowadays, people are drinking coffee throughout the whole, you know, span of the day they've got their you know sweet drinks their espresso drinks their double shots their caramel vanilla lattes hot cold <laughs> extra sugar salt you know and all these added msgs and things that are in these dairy. coffees and you've got dairy and all sorts of things yeah now they're nowadays people aren't just drinking that one little cup they're drinking a whole mug full of coffee yeah multiple times a day and two people are putting coffee up their butt now with coffee <laughs> in the muzz <laughs> what she says is worse than drinking coffee because it's not going in a filter like when it goes through your mouth and down there's more of a filter when you're putting it up you're behind it's actually way more toxic for you. Your stomach is your filter. So it's being filtered through the yeah. stomach. It's being filtered twice. It's being filtered when you're filtering the coffee through your coffee filter. And then um, your stomach is a filter as well. And then, yeah. Which kind of tells you a little bit about coffee and how toxic it really is if it has to be filtered. Yeah, like he that, says that you know? it's, it's actually a poison when your body has to filter something like that it's it's because it's a poison um you used to drink a lot of coffee yeah right i used to drink nothing but coffee this was like you yeah. know way over four years ago before yeah and so i think that my symptoms started or five years ago or a long time ago like when i first started working when i was 21 i got a job selling with the solar company and I was like the youngest guy at the company and I remember I'd go in there early I'd have my cup of coffee then I'd mm -hmm. have another cup of coffee then I'll have a third cup a fourth cup and it was like I was having two in the morning two in the afternoon and that went on from like when I was 21 till I got sick so you were 30 -ish. which is when I was 30 yeah. so yeah, yeah I mean we both I mean, I you were pretty. Uh... I didn't drink that much coffee, but I loved going to Starbucks and getting, you know, my iced coffee in the morning. I wouldn't do it every day, but I would do it pretty often. Um, you know, I was definitely. I wouldn't say addicted, but like, I it guess it was like a treat for you. Yeah, and like yeah. A, you know, so. But now I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's caffeine. There was. You know, I'd get it without dairy, but it, I think I was drinking soy milk then, which we don't do soy mm -hmm. and added sugars and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, coffee is just everywhere and it's just really blown up. And unfortunately, it's really just running your adrenals. Yeah, it's become kind of a monster, the caffeine industry. Yeah. So let's say you're someone who starts drinking coffee in your 20s. You go through your 20s, you hit your 30s, you're still drinking your coffee. You're starting to come down with these, you know, fatigue and just these weird symptoms in your body. So you go to the doctor to see if everything's working okay. And your doctor is not going to tell you to stop drinking caffeine mm -hmm. or coffee, right? Because most of them are also drinking coffee to keep themselves going. Um, the thing with coffee that the health industry will not tell you is that, or caffeine in general, is that it creates this fight or flight mm -hmm. in your body. Yeah, and that fight or flight is like when you're in a life 
or death situation, it's kind of like a superpower your body has where yeah. it releases all of this adrenaline to help you think on your toes or, you know, run out of a situation yeah. at a quicker pace. Or be or, stronger in that situation. Yeah. yeah, and so the caffeine, what it's doing is it's robbing us of the adrenaline because that. it's creating that fight or flight every single time that you drink it and you're running it's kind of like you're using up that reserve, re reserve. Yeah. and then when it comes time to some you know big thing to happen that you need that um it's not going to be there like you know what about pregnancy right so like when a woman has a baby, that uses all the adrenaline that she has to get that baby out. And if your body doesn't have enough, if your adrenals, so there's your adrenal glands that have your adrenaline, if your adrenals don't have enough stored up and if they're just completely run down, that woman might have trouble getting pregnant in the first place because her body knows, oh no, she doesn't have enough um, adrenaline stored up in order to have this baby, so her body can't handle it. Yeah, and since we're talking about reproductive stuff, what about libido? So Anthony also says that if your adrenals are also low and you're running them down, so maybe you're drinking a lot of coffee, maybe you're stressing yourself out a lot because those both rob your adrenaline, then you're not going to have a high libido. So it works for, for women, you know, and it works for men. For you both. Know? We see all these TV commercials about this blue pill that you can take to increase male li libido. Right. And I don't think that that was around in the 1940s and the 1950s. Yeah, I don't know when that came out, but yeah, that's... But what is it that they're pushing? It's a pharmaceutical. It's a pharmaceutical that they're pushing because adrenals are low from caffeine that was brought in to rob people. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the caffeine industry came out with a product to keep the workforce working yep right you know you you might be doing construction and you might go from job to job and in between jobs you you grab that energy drink or you grab that cup of coffee because right. you just need to keep going because you need to pay the bills and you need to work and and raise your or family. You and have a, a deadline, so you're up all night drinking coffee, you know, for school or for work. Or you're going to med school. You're a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Doctors, they run off of coffee and caffeine, and that's what keeps them going. Yeah. And without this stuff, you get brain fog, you have neurological issues, you get the shaky hands. This is if they are off the coffee. Yeah, because right? you're, you're going withdrawals. through withdrawals. Yeah, he says that um, like surgeons, he's like, I guarantee all like surgeons are on coffee and you don't want to have a surgeon that is trying to get off a of coffee because it can take, you know, weeks for those side effects or the withdrawal symptoms to go away. You do not want that want one that has brain fog or shaky hands working on you. Have you ever heard of people say like, I can't use the restroom until I have my cup of coffee in the morning? Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's because it, it shoots adrenaline through your body and pushes it out. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when you get nervous, you know, when you get really nervous, you always have to like go to the bathroom after you're really nervous. It's because you have a little adrenaline, adrenaline going. push going. Same thing when you drink your coffee, you're being triggered that fight or flight, the adrenaline's being triggered, which then makes you go poop and pee and also depletes the body of nutrients. Nutrients and minerals because it's a diuretic and it's just like, all right, let's dump everything out. And it's, it's pulling all the good stuff too. 
caffeine is also toxic and your body the way it reacts to anything toxic is get out of my system yeah you know like when you drink alcohol your alcohol you always have to go pee all the time that's because it's trying to get it out of your system it's trying to get the alcohol yeah. out of your system that's what's happening with coffee or caffeine you're drinking your caffeine your caffeinated teas and then all of a sudden you got to get it out because your body doesn't want it in there in the first place because it's toxic yeah and that's why we were saying caffeina robs you of everything is because she's taken all your vitamins and nutrients for that you know that fruit that you just had or from the day before all the good vegetables and stuff all the antioxidants had. i mean your cells they run off of fruit yeah. good glucose in your brain it runs off of glucose your neurons it runs off of glucose everything in your body runs off of glucose and and when you're doing the caffeine say goodbye to all that work you just did to to heal yourself yeah. and make yourself better so if you're chronically ill and you're trying to heal and you're doing all of medical mediums information but you're still drinking caffeine or using caffeine and you're wondering why you're not healing this is a big part of it because all yeah. the good you're doing you're robbing it because you're putting the bad in your body on top of it yeah and notice how he said takes your antioxidants that means it's going to make you age quicker totally because it's taking away your antioxidants which is what you need to thrive and look living and healthy and it's going to cause you to oxidate much quicker and you're going to start getting wrinkles sooner than you need to dry skin dry skin probably gray hairs and you're going to start most losing most people don't want that you'll start <laughs> losing your hair from caffeine oh not yeah, just that's the right. gray hair yeah, but you'll he, lose yeah. your hair and i know there's people all over the world that are losing their hair right now and women should never lose their hair right well men shouldn't either well of course that but you know <laughs> men you know you see more bald men out than there than you women. do bald women so well, yeah a lot of people have you know a lot of hair when, when you see a lot of hair coming out maybe in the shower when you're brushing your hair and you're like oh my gosh why is my hair falling out i need to go get tests done this happened to me before and really it's caused from these adrenaline rushes um because there's hormones in your adrenal glands and when those hormones get depleted yeah. the hormones attach to the hair follicles which then prevent the hair from but if the hormones are depleted from then, the adrenaline then they can't hold together your your hair follicles yep, yep. so that that's what causes that most of the time. People of, of, often question, well, why am I having teeth problems? Right, because it can cause cavities, because it's taking the nutrients out of your body. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, why, am, why is my skin wrinkled? I thought, I thought coffee had antioxidants in it. Well, that's what they want you to believe. When it, it might have a smidgen of antioxidants, it beats nothing to one piece of fruit's antioxidants. Everything pretty much has antioxidants. Yeah, I could right? go out in the, the forest right now and find a poisonous mushroom, and it has antioxidants in it. Even though it's poisonous and it would kill me, it still it has, has antioxidants, antioxidants in it. And that's how it is with, with uh, a lot of caffeine that's, you know, there's some some bad in it but then there's a little good maybe there's a little good the but antioxidants again, is the little good it's, and it's a smidge it's so small you know to where it's not even worth it it's just all bad yeah because the bad outweighs the good right all right so we've been talking about adrenaline and your adrenals and and all your adrenaline running well where does all that adrenaline end up ends up in the liver because your liver collects, collects it. it your liver yeah. is like the factory yeah it's collecting all all and everything that goes in the body good and bad yeah so before the factory says okay 
this is a good product, I'll release, I want to release this to the body, your liver has to process it first. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't like it, then it, you know, it stores it, it holds on to it. And, yeah. th and that's what's happening with all the adrenaline. The adrenaline's making its way to the liver, the liver's just holding on to it, which is then lowering your liver's immune system and uh -huh. weakening all of the cells in the liver. And that's because it's a toxic thing. Yeah, and the liver can only hold on to so much mm -hmm. until you get chronic illness symptoms or you get a fatty liver because it's collecting so many toxins and adrenaline and things like that. So Or it gets released, it collects and then says, I can't do I it can't anymore. I can't hold it and it starts flooding your body. Floods the bloodstream and then you get, you know, acne and, you know, stuff gets put out through the derma, which is your skin. And, yeah. you know, you can get tingles and numbness and heart palpitations and stuff like that. So it can affect your heart and your brain if the liver is not properly imbalanced. And I thought it was interesting what he said about the farms, like the coffee farms. Yeah, that part got me. And I couldn't stop thinking about it after because I just could not believe how toxic it really is. So coffee bean farms, people are out there picking and it has this, the, the bean itself has this toxic alkaloid and the plant and the plant itself so that you know when people are picking and let's say it's a hot day hot day your pores are open the alkaloids get, can get into your skin and if your pores close up too quickly and trap it in your body you can die and this has happened to plenty of people so Let's say they're out picking, Anthony says, you know, they're out picking and a rainstorm comes, then they're in trouble because the cold rain will cause their pores to close up. Yeah, we just talked about the liver. Pores close up and then the liver can't handle and the And it's just like a big shot yeah. of caffeine into your body and it kills you right then and there. Mm -hmm. You hear these people, they like die in their 20s or they're like in their 30s and they die in the middle of their sleep, you know. And no one knows what caused it. Yeah, no one's it was like, that guy, he was so healthy. He would go to the gym four days a week, you know. How did that happen? And a lot of times this can happen because of a reverse uh, polarity. Polarity? Just polarity. Reverse polarity. Mm -hmm. And that, that is essentially caused by an electrical spasm in the body. And it causes the blood to go to the, the heart in a reverse manner. And then it blows all the heart valves. Yeah, and this can happen when someone's sleeping and maybe they have a bad dream or they have, you know, a suspenseful dream where they're like running. If people want to get off the caffeine, how do they, how do we do that? Well, as I'm sure you all know, there will be withdrawal symptoms. You're gonna have migraines and headaches. You're gonna uh, have some brain fog and you're gonna be a little shaky. Um, and the severity of those is probably gonna depend on how much caffeine you rely on. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I got diagnosed with tremors. Remember my head would, would shake like this? Mm -hmm. Hasn't it gotten a lot better since yeah. I've been off the caffeine? Mm -hmm. It's almost non-existent. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's a withdrawal symptom and something I kind of went through as I was healing. Yeah. But there's other things that we can be doing. You know, what? let's look at what caffeine does to the body oh, and then yeah. we'll know what we need to repair yeah so what it's doing right it's messing with your neuro neurotransmitters in your brain right yep. Yep. depleting them and dehydrating them yeah because your your neurons in your brain are like you know i always think of that 
that game Pog where you had one little thing going that way and one going that mm -hmm. way and the ball would go from one to the other. Yep. That's like your neurons in your brain. They're yep. sending electrical impulses to one another. That's how they function. Yep. But if all of a sudden that electrical impulse got blocked from like heavy metals or depleted with ca from, caffeine. from caffeine, now all the neurotransmitters in your brain aren't working properly. And you then can't function. So we need to get more electrolytes into our system and the electrolytes will help restore these neurotransmitters. We need to get hydration. Plenty of hydration. And then we need to get these trace minerals in our bodies mm -hmm. because the trace minerals allow those electrical impulses to travel. So it's like, in order for that neurotransmitter to function properly, it needs th these trace minerals. So give it the trace minerals, and now those electrical impulses will be yep. nice and so balanced. These are things that you have to mend when you're getting off the caffeine in order to get through it. Mm -hmm. totally. So when we say electrolytes, we don't mean a power drink or a Gatorade. Yeah, no Powerade, no Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> the best source or a good source is coconut water, right? Coconut water is good. He says to drink that twice a day for what, like two weeks at least mm -hmm. um, while you're getting off the caffeine and then you can continue it on after that if you want. Yeah, and then celery juice, of course, it's just packed with electrolytes. Yep, and um, the trace minerals. Trace minerals, so it's got a, a little bit of both, mm -hmm. which is good. And, and he says to do that twice a day, right? Twice a day, and I remember listening to that podcast. Remember that podcast where that woman came in after one of his book signings or that something? That was actually in his first book. Okay. A woman went up to Anthony and said, you know, I have a very addictive personality. What can I do to fix that? And he said, drink 32 ounces of celery juice twice a day. She did that and then saw him again. A year later. A year later or something. And she's like, it completely cured me. I'm still doing it and it has fixed all, all of my, my addictions. addictions. So that is something to definitely incorporate getting off of caffeine or any addictive substance. So Anthony labels out this brain food and it's like certain foods that work best for the brain. Right. And your brain needs a lot of potassium because the potassium will help the neurotransmitters function. Yep. And so we need to bring in foods with potassium like banana, like figs, mm -hmm. like dates, and then if you're having like brain fog, try bringing in a lot more grapes. And, and then melons, melons are super filled with electrolytes, super yeah. high in electrolytes. Citruses are also very good with producing electrolytes. And then there's honey, and honey is like the ultimate glucose, ultimate brain food ever. So when you're getting off of the caffeine, you want to make sure you replenish your trace minerals because again, the caffeine is pulling that all out of you. A great thing to incorporate is the medical medium raw spinach soup. That is going to just replenish you full of trace minerals. And then the healing broth is another good thing to get the trace minerals in. That's something that we like to make and then drink it by itself as like an appetizer before dinner. And then, you know, fruits, veggies, herbs, wild foods, they all have trace minerals in it. Yeah, so bring in a lot of, lot of healthy plants. <laughs> yeah, so bring in the plants. While we're talking about bringing those things in, let's talk about bringing in the fruit. Not fearing the fruit and bringing the fruit in because mm -hmm. the brain runs off of fruit. It runs off of good sugar. Yep. And we need to bring in as much fruit as we can because that's gonna really just jolt our body and 
jolt all our neurotransmitters and, and electrical impulses and just replenish. fill us with all replenish. that good stuff. Because when you're getting off of that caffeine, you're having all these withdrawal symptoms because your body is so depleted of everything. Mm -hmm. So, something he says is mango. Mango twice a day is really helpful when coming off of caffeine. Also, a lot of smoothies. Juices too. And juices. And a lot of fruit. A lot of fruit. So what you can do is you can throw in a ton of fruit. You can even throw in some leafy greens for trace minerals. Blend it up. Throw in something frozen so it's nice and cold and you have yourself a delicious smoothie. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a juicer, juice it up. Yep. Bring in the glucose. As much as you want. Yeah. Just bank those calories. <laughs> Keep those calories coming. Fill up the glucose. Yeah. Uh, about hydration too. Yeah, so you're dehydrated when you're on caffeine. Super dehydrated. So when you're coming off of it, you need to really hydrate up. Yep, and hydration you'll get from the lemon and the lime water. We told you about that. Yeah. The so, celery juice, Yep. coconut water. Mm -hmm. And those three things, you should just plan on bringing 32 ounces in twice a day of all of those things. yep when you're coming off the coffee rev those things up because that will just overhydrate yep. your body and just fill it with all the things you need to and yes get past it. you will be peeing a lot and that doesn't mean that those things are toxic it means that those things are pushing out toxic stuff so we take a lot of ester c and that's something that everybody should be taking every day and b12 B12 will strengthen the nervous system and then you've also got uh, magnesium. A great supplement also is melatonin and melatonin will calm the central nervous system mm -hmm. and then if you take it if you take your melatonin with cherries then it makes the melatonin more powerful. Cool. Yep and what else is gonna help you coming off of the addiction would be like lemon balm something that we also take every single day great immune system supplement um california poppy will be really helpful and kava kava and then i think he lists like a whole bunch more in his cleanse to heal book under the addiction do you remember the page i think it was like 488 but just look up in the back look up addiction and he'll lay out the page and it's got all his supplements, all the herbs, everything you need to be mm -hmm. taking if you're battling the caffeine addiction. Yep. Then if you're into spiritual healing, a great option would be praying. Praying to the angel of addiction mm -hmm. and asking the angel of addiction to help you get off your caffeine addiction. Yeah. So when you do that, you want to say it out loud so that they can hear you. So give them an example. So you would say, angel of addiction, I'm praying to you to ask that you help me get through my caffeine addiction, help me to be able to remove it from my daily lifestyle and to allow me to heal and incorporate the things that are going to heal my body. Oh, that was good. And then just be very grateful and say thank you very much for your help. And then you can you can pray to the angel of addiction as much as you would like. So in ancient times, they used to use uh, caffeine, caffeine plants mm -hmm. in their ceremonies. And these caffeine plants would be part of the ceremony. But today people use caffeine as a crutch very two different worlds yeah. you know I would have never thought we would have never thought that caffeine would be the monster it is today yeah I had no idea just blew my mind about how poisonous it is that it's dangerous for people to even pick it I would say that that was a good one, right? That was very comprehensive. A lot of information. Yeah. If you're you're new and you're just getting this information, it can be a little overwhelming. We get it. Yeah. But we hope that 
You take this information in, you give it some thought. Yeah, take and... it one day at a time. So you guys, if you liked this video or found it helpful, please give us a like and be sure to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and hit that little bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And drop us some comments, you know, let us know what you thought of this one. This, this was a rough one, I think, for a lot of people, so tell us your thoughts. Yeah, do you drink coffee? What's your status? All right, you guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining us. See, see you later. Ya. Bye. Oh my God.